Hey guys, this is my review for House of the Dragon Episode 8. So I want to start off by giving a quick spoiler warning, this video will have spoilers in it. And yeah, I'll just get into it. So this is Episode 8 of House of the Dragon, Lord of the Tides is what it's called, I think. And yeah, I've been loving this show so far, I thought last episode was the best of the season. Or the best of the season so far and yeah I've been loving the show it, it's been incredible maybe even better than Game of Thrones at this point you know just in terms of I don't know if I want to say in terms of first season but you know I just in terms I I think it's on level if not better than Game of Thrones so yeah um, but talking about episode 8 um, I loved it I fucking loved it I, I, no surprise I loved it I loved it. It was incredible. It was incredible. It was an incredible hour of television. You know, I think I don't know what it got on IMDb, but I heard before the episode came out, people were saying it was getting 10 out of 10, which is like very hard to get on IMDb. I haven't checked to see what it is now, but I mean, yeah, and that got me excited going into it, and it's just, it's just amazing. It was, it, it's a bit slower than it was the last episode. I think last episode, I think I still may prefer last episode because. The stuff that happened last episode was like so drastic and huge and it was fast paced and there was a bunch of stuff happening that was just like incredible but this episode was, it was incredible nonetheless. It might, this is definitely my second favourite episode if if not my first because my first is still six. I'm going to say it's the best episode so far as episode, no sec, not six, sorry, episode seven. Episode seven is still the best episode so far but this is my second favourite. This was just incredible, like I can't, I'm trying to think of a flaw but I can't. The only reason it's not number one is because number s episode seven was just so good. But yeah, um, s a lot of stuff even happened this episode. I mean, and uh, I talk about how it was a bit slower. It was short in terms of like actual what's happening, but the stuff that's you know the stuff that's happening is 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 dra is drastic. It's uh, it was great. Anyway, I want to actually talk about what happened. So I'm not going to break it down. I'm just going to talk randomly. I'm going to babble basically. Just talk about the things I loved and the thing why I love them. So this episode Renera goes Renera and Damon and their children they go to um King's Landing to discuss the petition of uh Luce of Lucerus's um legitimacy to his claim to the um the uh driftwood driftmark whatever it's called. I yeah to the yeah whatever. Um because Cor Corlys Corlys Cor Corliss, I think it's Corliss. Corliss is uh, missing, presumed dead. I think for six, I don't know. He's missing, presumed dead. I think nobody saw him, yeah. So he's been missing, presumed dead for like six years or something. I, I They say he's got like a disease or something, I don't know. But let's, Corliss is out of the picture at this point in time. So, and Corliss' brother, Vaymond, Valen, I'm not sure. I will look that up real quick and get back because I actually do want to know. Yeah, okay, it was Vaymond, I was right. Um, so yeah, he is petitioning Lucerus' claim to the um, the tides, the whatever, the... It's, it's so hard to... The, 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 the Driftmark, I'm just going to say Driftmark, you know what I mean. Um, he's petitioning his claim to the Driftmark, and because he thinks that he is not, he's clearly, you know, what he is, he suspects that he's a bastard, and that he's not really um, Lainor's son. Which is true, but uh, the thing about it is, Corliss last episode he 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 gave his permission, he gave his blessing. He wanted Lucerus to be to inherit the um, Driftmark. He he wanted that, so I don't understand. Like he's going against his brother's wishes, which is strange. But that guy Vaymond, uh, while I completely understand where he's coming from, in he wants his family line family lineage to be continued and to not be taken over by this you know bastard whatever. I, he's I hate him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate him after what he said about Rhaenyra and her children. I just, he deserved what got, what came to him. When Damon did that and when he said, say it, that was incredible. He wanted him to do it because he wanted a reason to fucking kill him. I know that. And I knew he was going to die. Like, the second he started spouting on about the shit, I was like, alright, I expect the king to just be like, take him away or whatever and kill him. But no, Damon fucking decap, like, sliced his head in two after he finally said what everyone else was too afraid to say, which, you know, Fuck him for saying it. 
what you said, the children are bastards, and Rhaenyra is, I'm not gonna, I don't want to say it, because it feels like a dirty word, and Rhaenyra is, whatever, he called her, he called her a terrible insult, but, yeah, um, so that was crazy when he got to cap that, if he had it coming though, he should have kept his mouth shut, but I understand his point of view, you know, but anyway, and also that scene where Viserys, Viserys' episode was incredible, he was amazing, and spoiler alert, he finally died, which means things are gonna fucking kick off next episode, but yeah, that walk to the throne uh, was so, the walk that he did to the throne was so fucking amazing and so beautifully done, and when he drops his crown and it's Damon that picks it up, it's, it's, it says, it's show don't tell, you know, it says so much without saying anything, and they've had a very complicated relationship throughout the series, and you know, that part was, it was very, it was beautiful and it was incredible to watch. I, I really like Damon now, honestly, like, I, Damon was a bit of a snake at the start of the series, but I, I really like Damon, you know, he got what he wanted, he got right now. But anyway, um, so yeah, and then the, the dinner scene I want to talk about, I thought the dinner scene was incredible, and I think it was a good way for Viserys to die. It, it, he didn't die after dinner, but he died later that night. He saw his family happy again you know like he saw them reconciling well they said you know what he saw and he, he, he died on those terms which i'm happy i'm glad he got like a happy peaceful death basically but now that he's dead shit's gonna start but i want to talk about aymond and specifically his relationship with damon not aymond yeah aymond i want to talk about aymond and his relationship with damon they are going to fight you can tell they're going to have a big fucking battle i don't know anything about the books or anything but they are going to have a big battle and it's going to be epic like they're so similar and this, they, they're very similar, and they, you can tell Aemon admires and envies uh, Damon, but they're going to have an amazing showdown. Also, Aegon, is like, the, the thing about Aegon and Aemon is like, Aegon doesn't scare me, but he's a disgusting piece of shit, you know, what he did to that maid was gross. And uh, Alison was giving off Cersei vibes, but she actually just gave her abortion tea, I thought it was poison, but it wasn't. Uh, but she was giving off Cersei vibes in that bit. Um, I am Team Blacks, by the way, I want to say I am not team greens even though i understand where they come from sometimes but yeah aegon the thing about aegon is he doesn't scare me he's just a, he's a disgusting piece of shit yeah but aemon fucking terrifies me like that whole dinner when he was being silent the whole time i knew something was gonna happen i knew he was gonna do something and when he got up and made that toast about the strong boys to luceris and Gisaris, uh renera's kids i was like oh my god and that was that bit was insane and honestly good on Gisaris for punching him out because fuck that guy um yeah so, yeah, pretty much, it, the, what I really liked seeing was I liked seeing them happy. I liked seeing Rhaenyra and Damon laughing together I like at the dinner. I liked seeing Alicent and Rhaenyra reconcile. But all of that came to a head and ended when, at the end of it, um, uh, Alicent hears Viserys on his bed. Viserys thinks he's talking to Rhaenyra when he's talking about the Song of Ice and Fire and Aegon and stuff. They both, the thing is, Rhaenyra and Alicent both have children named Aegon. So that's going to be confusing. But uh, Alicent hears, because uh, Rhaenyra went to Viserys for his support and to tell him the truth about the Song of Ice and Fire, the prophecy and all that. And Alicent goes there and she, and, you know, Viserys is all drugged out. He thinks that it's Rhaenyra. So he says, like, stuff about, like, Aegon is meant to rule. He is meant to bring peace. So clearly, even after all the reconciling that just happened with her and Rhaenyra, shit is going to go down because she believes that her Aegon is meant for the throne. When really, it is... Um, Rhaenyra is Aegon, who is meant for the throne, and Viserys is dead now, so Rhaenyra should be queen. Like, rightfully, she should be queen, so shit is going to hit the fan next episode, and I'm so excited. I'm loving this show. I'm loving it. It's amazing. It's incredible. The writing is just so, so brilliant, and I, oh, it's just, yeah, it's, I love it. Anyway, that is my review for episode 8 of House of the Dragon. Check out my other reviews if you haven't already and stay tuned for the next one. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the show and the episode. And yeah, and uh, like and subscribe if you like the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.